Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the Lifelong Learning Exec Subcommittee of Perth and Kinross Council on the 21st of March 2022. Um, you're all very welcome and those watching online. Um, can I remind everyone to keep their microphones muted throughout the meeting unless you're speaking? Um, and remember that today's meeting is being streamed live and recorded and will be available on the Council's website after the meeting. Um, we've got quite a number of faces on the screen today. You're all very welcome um, and we'll introduce you as we proceed through the agenda. Um, can I ask Charlotte, do we have any apologies or substitutions? And to take a roll call as well, please. Sorry, it's early Monday morning. Um, we have apologies from Councillor Sarwar. Thank you. Do you need to do a roll call, Charlotte? Or Yeah, just for, for the record, I'll do a roll call. Obviously, we have yourself, Councillor Shires. Councillor Duff? Present. Councillor Rebeck? Present. And Councillor Simpson? Present. That's everybody, thank you. A nice short one today. Yeah. Can I, can I ask if there's any um, declarations of interest from elected members in respect of the business on the agenda? seeing head shaking, so I'll take that as a no. Um, and can we agree, moving on to item three, can we agree the minutes of the meeting of the Exec Subcommittee of 1st of November 2021? Agreed. Thank you. Um, and that takes us on to item four on the agenda, which is the standards and quality in schools, learning communities and preschool centres, daycare of children, snappy title. Um, and I'll invite Sharon Johnson to introduce the report and appendix one of the papers, which are pages 15 to 18 of the agenda. Thank you very much, Councillor Shires, and good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to introduce this report, which sets out the key findings following inspections of our early learning and childcare settings that have been undertaken by the Care Inspectorate since our last committee, which took place in November 2021. We also have reports on two follow through inspections from Education Scotland, which were undertaken um, by them in 2021. And so I'm delighted to see that Annabel Burns, um, head teacher of North Newton Primary School, and Fiona Robertson, head teacher of Perth Grammar School, are here to present an update on progress in their schools since those inspections took place and the follow up reports um, resulting from that. With reference to the most recent inspection reports, then um, they were published by the Care Inspectorate. There have been no reports that have been presented to committee today as an exception, and members will be aware that the Care Inspectorate reports, because they are so numerous, are only presented to this committee if they are um, graded as adequate, weak, unsatisfactory or excellent. And today, unusually, we have no reports um, of that nature to present. So section one of this report details that changes to the decisions made by Education Scotland in respect of resuming their inspection activity during 2021 to 22. Due to the ongoing cases and the numbers of COVID that are still prevalent within our ELC settings in our schools, Education Scotland have announced that they are going to um, carry out only recovery visits from now until the end of the academic session and they won't resume inspection activity, which will result, result in any inspection um, evaluations or gradings. So Education Scotland have said that the, the purpose of these recovery visits are, is really just to listen to schools and to engage with pupils, staff and parents to listen to how schools have responded to the challenge of the pandemic whilst keeping continuity of learning and teaching going. So there is no further inspection activity beyond the two schools um, that we're going to hear from today. So section two of then this report summarises the inspection activity since November and we've had 11 inspections taking place within our ELC settings. Uh, two of those were implemented using the new quality uh, framework and these were being um, regarded as test inspections and therefore there were no grades published for those. So out of the nine published inspections that we have then, um, we can see that 35 out of the 36 quality indicators that have been evaluated since November have achieved the, the Perth and Kinross standard of good or better. Section two of this report also summarises the decision to terminate um, the contract with one of our partner providers in October 2021. 
Section 3 in Appendix 1 then um, provides a summary of our overall performance of our ELC settings over the last five years and our comparisons with our comparator authorities and our national data. And on page 16 of the appendix, I would just like to draw members attention to the new information that we're now presenting to committee, and that's on the current position of all our various settings in ELC. We've recognised that the, the national data over time is really um, important to see our progress, but we also think it's really important to know for members to know in this committee in particular to understand what our current performance is. And so you'll see then that the new charts show the pro proportion of all of our settings who have achieved good or better evaluations across our nurseries, our kids clubs and our childminders. You can see that there's a, a really strong performance across the board and you'll note that the improvements have, that have been made by the early years team to the slight dips in some of our evaluations that we saw recently as we moved into full of implementation of 1140 hours is now becoming really evident. So we've got very high percentages across all of our settings, achieving at least a good or better evaluation. Um, I wouldn't want to say too much more about the performance um, information. I think it's um, quite familiar to members, but we do got our, have a range of officers who are here to answer any questions that anybody has, either on the summary of performance um, or on the current performance before we move into the, the two reports that we have before you today. So happy to take any questions. Thank you, Sharon. Um, do any of the elected members have questions? If you put a queue in the chat box. Uh, Councillor Simpson. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Convener. I just wanted uh, a wee bit more information about paragraph 2.2.4 with reference to the, the Craigie Park nursery that closed. Can we have some information perhaps about how any support we can give to the parents in these circumstances uh, when there's an unexpected closure to, to assist them to get them um, somewhere. Because I, I know myself from family members how critical it can be to, to people's lives that they have somewhere to um, put the kids when they're off to work and so on. And I just wonder if when somewhere is shut, to, what, what do we do to help support the parents? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Simpson. Um, I'm going to ask Ben Scott to, to provide a summary of, of what we do under normal circumstances. And perhaps just as a, an introduction to that, um, when we do take a decision to terminate a contract with a partner provider, it's a decision that we think long and hard about because we do understand the real impact for parents um, around that. So a huge amount of work goes in prior to any decision to close and part of that and in fact a huge part of that is about preparing um, for any resulting changes to childcare. So I'll, I'll ask Ben Scott just to give a bit of information on that process. That's okay. Yes, thank you, Sharon. Um, morning, um, Councillor Simpson. Thank you for that question. Um, we have an officer who's is specifically dedicated to communicating with parents around about their needs um, when we have to take the decision to terminate a contract and um, we contact all the parents um, in writing but also thereafter by telephone to discuss their needs with them so that we can find the best fit of ELC for them thereafter. Um, and so we've always managed to find um, any parent who has been in that unfortunate situation um, another setting to meet the needs for their childcare and their, and their child's um, progress and learning. So I hope that answered your question. Councillor Simpson's having the same issues with his unmute button that I am today. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. I should have just put my thumbs up. There we go. Yeah, quite happy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Councillor Rebick. Thank you, convener. It's just a very broad one, and as always, sometimes as a as an elected member, stroke layperson, you try to read between the lines a little bit of these reports. But it feels like we're in a pretty good place, and I just wonder if that's the correct impression I'm getting. Really broadly, thanks. 
Yeah, thank you, Councillor Revick. It, it does um, indeed feel like we're in a, a really good place. And in Perth and Kinross, we've always had a really strong performance in terms of our early learning and childcare. We've always had very strong evaluations against both our comparators and our national um, data across Scotland. And with the implementation of 1140, there have been some significant challenges. And you'll remember in previous committees that we've had reported um, a dip in, in two of our quality indicators, in one about the quality of environment and one about the quality of leadership and management across all of our settings. And, and that's been very easily and well understood by our early years team because of the, the significant expansion of 1140 and the number of uh, partners that we are now in, in working with. So we've now got over 105 settings that deliver early learning and childcare. And over the past um, two years, I would say that, that the early years team have been working incredibly hard to really look at those quality indicators and that we've made some significant improvements in some of the environments and supported our partner nurseries particularly to really focus on the quality of the, the learning environments within some very different varied settings from very small settings to very large ones and, and both have presented challenges for, for partners to make sure that they've got a really high quality learning environment within those settings and clearly the staffing challenges around the quality of leadership and management and, and I would have to pay a significant tribute to the work that um, Bernadette Scott and the Early Years team have undertaken across that vast and varied landscape with introducing new childminders uh, into our settings, working with partner providers and across our own local authority nurseries too. And so this year, I think it's really important to look at our current performance and see that the, the dips that we were suffering a couple of years ago have really improved and come up this year. So I do think we're in a very strong place. Councillor Rebeck, thank you. Thank you. I think when we look back to that Friday afternoon, Sharon, when we were uh, brought in on a Friday for the, into the chambers, not that we remember that at all. And just the scale of uh, of the challenge that was in front mm -hmm. of all of this, who would have factored in a global pandemic in the middle of it too? Um, and I think it is tribute to, to Bernadette and her team um, and, and yourself, Sharon, as well, for, for leadership to, to ensure that we are in the in the place that we are. So um, our, our grateful thanks to, to all involved. Uh, Councillor Duff. Uh, thanks, Convener. <clears throat> I had a question around about quality of management leadership, which uh, Sharon has addressed in their last response. Thanks. Thank you. I had um, one brief uh, question, Sharon, and you mentioned the Education Scotland recovery visits and that they're just um, effectively listening exercises. Is you know, obviously when they go in and listen, they then want to do something with what they've heard. Is that is that going to form part of a, a national reporting um, picture or, or how will that be used? Yes, yeah, thanks, Councillor Shires. Yes, they, they really are looking for information across the country about how schools and, and nurseries have coped with the impacts of, of the pandemic. What they will do is they're, they're looking for volunteer uh, settings to invite Education Scotland teams in along with a local authority officer so there will be one of our team who would be invited along to any inspection which will be a really good opportunity I think for Education Scotland and local authority to work together and and they're very clear that it's a, it's a listening exercise they want to hear good practice they want to hear what the challenges have been they want to look at the continuity of learning um, across the piece. They'll look at safeguarding um, and how we've managed to ensure that child protection and, and child safety has been considered. And what they will do is they will provide um, a written report but will not be published for parents and it won't be evaluated. But what Education Scotland will do with that information is collate that across the board and just provide information um, across the piece just to share that learning. Thank you. Um, Councillor Simpson. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Convener. Uh, as you look at the statistics here, it's pretty good that the, the worst you can do is 76 so percent. It's, it's all very good um, uh, reading. I just wondered, uh, do they ever check the quality of, of the food? I don't see any indication of that. And the reason I ask is that I know um, 
my wee grandson thinks that his nursery is an all you can eat buffet rather than a nursery, you know, and it, 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 the, the, the food is extremely important to him, certainly. And I thought there might have been some mention of that, and not just from the nutritional point of view, but from the education point of view as well. Yes, thanks, Councillor Simpson. And that's really nice to hear that your grandson thinks that the food is really important in nursery and indeed it is to, to ourselves and to the Cairns Spectra and Education Scotland also. There's, there's actually a quite significant piece of work that has been done around nutritional standards and um, and members might be aware of some of the, the parental views about that, um, but there's a, a very good national guidance around uh, early learning and childcare settings, nutritional guidance called Setting the Table, and it's so much more than just food. Um, I'll, I'll perhaps just pass over to Ben just to, to talk through what that is for us nationally and perhaps our own person Kim Ross um, trials around the family mealtime experience. Ben, would you like to just perhaps give a little bit more information on that? Absolutely, Sharon, I can I can do that. Um, we have what we call a family mealtime experience in our ELC settings and absolutely is it is about the nutritional content uh, which Sharon's described comes from setting the table, but it's actually more than that. It's a, a learning experience. It's a social event and um, the children are sitting around the table and um, learning to use their cutlery, etc, etc. And the care inspectorate do actually pay a great deal of attention to that when they go in on inspection um, and they will always comment on that in the narrative of the report. And as well as that, um, Councillor Simpson, we've developed our own checklists, which we also go and do our own quality assurance around about our family mealtime experience so that so that it is actually alive and well in all of our settings. So our own early years team are doing quality assurance around about that and making sure that um, the children in Perth and Cross do have the best eating experience out there. Thank Thanks you so that. much. Thank you. Okay, so I'm not seeing any further questions. So thank you, Sharon for, and Ben, for answering those questions. And that takes us on to the next item, which I think will be Appendix 2, which is uh, Perth Grammar School. Um, we're delighted to have this back in front of us today, um, Fiona and Donald. And I'll invite Donald McLeod to introduce the paper. Thank you, convener and good morning. Perth Grammar School was inspected in November 2019 and Education Scotland indicated that they would make a further visit in connection with that inspection a year following the publication of the report in January 2020. At the time in 2019, Perth Grammar School had 1,049 pupils enrolled. The school had a staffing complement of 89.7 teachers and 28.5 non-teaching staff. The follow through inspection was not possible a year later due to the pandemic. However, there was continued engagement with Education Scotland and the managing inspector throughout. The return visit was able to be rescheduled for November 2021, and it was encouraging that both the head teacher and Education and Children's Services were fully involved in the preparation and planning for the visit, and then the visit itself, which included being part of observations, focus groups, and discussions around the findings. At the time of the visit in 2021, Perth Grammar School had 787 pupils enrolled. The school had a staffing complement of 69.6 .6 teachers and 21.2 non-teaching staff. Education Scotland will make no more visits in connection with this report and will engage with Education and Children's Services on further progress made in due course. We are pleased that the good progress and improvements made by the school under the leadership of the head teacher and her senior leadership team have been recognised. And this has been through a period of significant change and in supporting young people and their families through COVID-19. We are confident that the school has the capacity to continue to improve. I will now ask Fiona Robertson, head teacher, to provide an update on progress in the areas of improvement. Good morning, committee. Um, I'll just put a wee clause in first. I'm delivering from home having finally succumbed to COVID myself, so um, please bear with me. Um, so I reported to committee in November 2020 the progress made following our short model inspection report published in January 2020. Our return inspection pre-COVID times was due to take place in January 2021, as Donald was referred to, and this subsequently happened in November 2021 as a return visit. 
The headway in our action plans that I reported that have since come to further fruition and ratified by the published letter from Education Scotland um, on 21st December 2021. The return visit took into consideration how the school had supported children, young people and families through COVID-19, as well as the progress made with the recommendations from the previous inspection. Supporting children, young people and families through COVID-19, therefore, from the get go of the pandemic, um, the school was very responsive to the change in picture locally and nationally. Much of our digital work and our vision as a school meant that we were able to transition to the delivery of remote and blended learning. And as far as possible, knowing the context of our school, we realised that encouraging routine and our normal curriculum as far as possible was absolutely the best response for Perth Grammar's learning community. Education Scotland recognised that our young people have been well supported by the teachers and staff. Moving forward, we continue to utilise and build upon the changes made to our delivery then. And for instance, classes continue to use Microsoft Teams as a resource accessible at all times to learners, whether that be for catch up or supported study purposes. Some of our best examples of engagement with our parent body and contact with families continues to take the shape of a more informal tea with the head teacher sessions or specifically themed presentations that we hold virtually. And so whilst that has been hugely challenging for Perth Grammar, there are many ways that the school has learned from the pandemic and that will be here to stay. And even things as simple as some of those aspects being reintroduced in, uh, sorry, the, the not reintroducing the, our school bell, for example. The progress made from the actual recommendations from the previous inspection, then at the time, um, the same time as navigating our way through COVID-19, the school welcomed the distraction of having an improvement agenda to demonstrate. And our core areas of improvement were best identified now under two clear areas, the first of these being reason, attainment and achievement. Now, the data that we, we now have is, uh, is much uh, in clearer uh, systems that are enabling us in, as the staff to have better access to information. We introduced a team board to identify timely interventions for learners and house teams, regularly review key information and respond accordingly. An example of this is best demonstrated through our attendance monitoring. Literacy and numeracy progression continues to be well supported with pupil equity funding, as has been shown in improvements, for example, with reading age ages. As an extended leadership team, level facu faculty, sorry, level faculties um, are increasingly sharing good practice and developing improvements, particularly in planning and assessment more consistently. In relation to the second area, delivering high quality learning and teaching, since establishing what we refer to as our PGS5, the five features of high quality learning and teaching, we are increasingly seeing effective communication, clear expectations, positive relationships, successful learning and everyone engaged in le lessons. Now that this, there is a shared understanding, we have commenced monitoring classroom delivery through regular visits at faculty and whole school level. Our PGS5 Strategies to Pedagogy and Equity Staff Development Programme means that we are committed to um, maintaining improvements in learning and teaching to best ensure pupil engagement and progress. Professional development of this nature is a big undertaking, but it's the beginning to reap benefits, particularly now that staff are almost halfway, half of the way through it. Our learner voice has indicated that they are experiencing an increased range of formative assessment and question techniques to bring about deeper thinking skills and we need to continue to build on this. In summary, the, the return visit has afforded Perth Grammar an, a, an opportunity to showcase improvement in unprecedented circumstances, not least recognition of how we have handled those, but identifying the increased expectations set and that have produced early indications that attainment measures are getting better. I wish to thank elected members for your continued support of Perth Grammar and I remain confident about the ongoing improvements in the school. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fiona. I'm sorry that you've finally succumbed to, to, to COVID. <laughs> um, the report certainly makes very encouraging reading and, and I know what a period of, uh, of change it's been for yourself, you know, not just with, with COVID and, and all that that's brought, but also changes in your in your senior management team and, and across the school. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot going on at Perth Grammar School, mm -hmm. but the uh, the results are really encouraging. Um, I'm seeing questions in the chat from Councillor Simpson followed by Councillor Duff. Thank you, convener. I have a question relating to the last paragraph on page one of the letter where uh, they make mention of um, young people feeling they've been supported well during the pandemic. 
and uh, supporting it with the challenges of blending and remote learning. I'm just wondering if we can get a bit more information so we can be reassured that uh, all our young people have access to the necessary kit uh, to, to, to engage, in including uh, broadband connections, because for some households that's extremely costly. Um, I, I just wonder if we can get a little bit of information about that and also uh, how do we um, manage to engage with perhaps those young people who either cannot or do not wish to engage. How do we highlight that? Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Um, my immediate response to that is um, ref referring to our People Care and Welfare um, Officer team. Um, they've been funded through our People Equity Funding um, and they're there to, in fact, a really impressive way at the very, very beginning. They were making visits to homes, for example, very early on um, and also helped to aid the distribution of where there was a need for young people to receive technology. Um, so uh, if my memory, if I recall correctly, it was around about 100 devices that we distributed distributed at the time. Um, so to, we made sure absolutely that all of our young people had the necessary access and we repeatedly would uh, go back to our families to make sure that they were feeling that, that they had everything that they required because we were aware of, of course, uh, um, of families maybe having to rely on one or two devices in a household and so on as well. And so we sought to alleviate that as quickly as we could. Um, and I, I'm really quite proud of the fact that we did so effectively by absolutely maximising the team that we have. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, you. Councillor Duff. Thanks. I was going to ask a question about uh, the people with care and welfare officer, but I'll, I'll ask uh, my second question, which was about um, your newly formed attainment board. And I just wondered mm -hmm. if you could give us a little bit of a, of a um, uh, t tell us a little bit about the board, who sits on it, how often you meet, what kind of things you look at. Absolutely. Um, so our um, attainment board is actually it, it's populated by this, not only the senior leadership team, but the main focus is actually on our house team. So our um, principal teachers of guidance and our principal teacher of support for learning. And what we do there is we um, highlight a, well, it's really a, a very time timeless way for us to make sure that we're seeking interventions for our young people as quickly as possible. So we meet to review the data that we have across the piece. Um, we discuss where we see or identify early trends that would indicate any concerns and that comes from our tracking and monitoring reports um, and from using that information together then we're able to in the house system is obviously the best place for us to to put that focus and the attention um, and even linking back to the people care and welfare officers we now have those aligned with each house as well in the school so that means we've got a very targeted approach of being able to to really get in quite quick and make sure that we're supporting our young people at early doors and um, for anything that we see may be a, um, an, an issue or present our young people with, with any challenges and difficulties and that way we can best support them um, to move forward in order for them to do as best as they possibly can. So that's, that's what the board actually looks like um, and we meet usually um, twice a term um, and equally in between times the host teams do meet um, on a regular basis um, as well to support that to make sure that interventions in place are being followed up appropriately. Thanks, that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rebeck. Thanks again, convener. I was going to ask you, Fiona, about because um, I'm genuinely curious often about how People Equity Fund is used in practice. But an early answer to Councillor Simpson's reminded me that I think it is a, around welfare officers that you use your your PEF money for. I think, isn't it? And um, just before you answer it, all the best if you've got COVID. You do sound a little bit choked, so I hope you're okay and that you recover quickly. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I'm just glad that you didn't see me on Friday, and I think the the officers around the screen they weren't spared of that in terms of the So, um, yeah, in relation to the people care and welfare officer team, I think the key thing that I would also be keen to highlight there um, would be the the impact they've had on attendance. That's been really really helpful for us to be able to target that. And obviously, where young people attend school and we have higher attendance, that links naturally with a team with attainment and achievement. So, um, that's been a really helpful way for us, especially you you know just now to to ensure that we're targeting that. So we have seen improvements there um, and it is a, it's a, that's something that the three of them have been extremely well received from a school level to, to focus on. So it's been really very helpful. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I'll ask elected members if you've got any comments sort of more widely beyond the questions that you'd like to 
Thank you. Not seeing any. I think unless they're coming in slowly, they are. I suspected that would be the case. Sorry, can we know? They would be quicker just putting our hands up today. It's taken forever. Councillor Rebeck. Thank you. It was just a, a, a brief comment, if I can, um, on the the paper around the, the improvement paper, actually, which I forgot to stick my C in the box for, because I think it is important, and, and I, I suspect this is recognised across the elected members, so there's certainly no grandstanding here, but I know that early years childcare expansion has been challenging for very good reason. It's really important, but I think it is important we we do recognise Ben and her team. Um, it's been unbelievable the work that they've done over the last probably four or five years, actually, but particularly the last couple of years during COVID. So I think it's important we place our um, appreciation of that on record. Thank you. Thanks for that. I know my fault for not asking for comments after the earlier paper. I'm sorry about that. Um, Fiona, we'd just like to, on behalf of the of the committee and of wider elected members, recognise the terrific effort that's gone into um, Perth Grammar School over the over the the last two two years. It's been inordinately difficult for everybody, but you know when you had um, the particular challenges that that you've really stepped up and 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 got stuck into, and and I know that from from feedback from local elected members and from parents and from pupils at the school that it feels a very, very different place for everybody now and and that's really encouraging um, and credit has to go to yourself and, and your team and we we always say this but we genuinely mean it please take our our best wishes and our thanks back to everybody because we know that everybody's tired it's you know it's been it's been a really tiring period without having to to run a school with the best part of what's it 800 900 pupils in it um, you know so so we do recognize the challenge that you faced it and the and I, i'm sure that that letter from the inspector probably was was one of the best things that you could have received at, at that point so and um, please take back our thanks and our best wishes and and we look forward to to, to further improvement and um, advancement for the cause of the of the young people that, that you serve at perth grammar school and we hope you feel better soon so thank you fiona and donald Thank you very much. We'll, we'll let you go and have a lie down now. And that takes us on to our next report that we've got today, which is uh, North Newton Primary School. And I'll invite Gillian Knox to introduce the report, please. Thank you, convener. Good morning, everyone. Um, so North Muirton Primary School and Nursery was inspected in November 2019 with a focus on two quality indicators, learning, teaching and assessment and raising attainment and achievement. And at that time, the school was graded as weak for both quality indicators. It's my pleasure to introduce Annabelle Burns, who took up the permanent post of head teacher in January 2020, approximately eight weeks before the first period of lockdown. And he also supported the return visit by HMIE in November of last year. So this was a different approach to a return inspection. The, the visit reviewed progress in the recommendations made in the initial inspection. And additionally, the inspectors reviewed the school's uh, response to COVID-19. So as Donald described in the context for Perth Grammar, there was continuing close engagement between HMI, the school and local authority, which included a range of support and professional dialogue throughout. So Annabelle will share the high level findings from the visit, which reflect the improvement journey the school have been on over the last two years. Annabelle. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for inviting me along here today. Um, I am delighted to share that North Mewton Primary School made very positive progress against the action plan set out in January 2020. Um, I would like to now share with you the high level messages from our inspection summary and as everyone has referred to, there's support from children and families through COVID-19 first and then I will share the progress with recommendations from the previous inspection. Supporting children and families through COVID-19, it was identified that senior leaders and staff are fully committed to supporting children and families. The staff went above and beyond to ensure all children had what they needed for their learning. For example, doorstop visits, regular phone calls, learning packs and resources available in the playground and local shops. Clear guidance on remote learning to staff during lockdown periods ensured we had shared expectations and a level of consistency across the school and early learning centre. 
Senior leaders took action to alleviate social isolation, stress and anxiety, with the school becoming a focal point for the community. On return to in-school learning, the inspectors identified that the assessment framework was developed that had been developed to identify where children were in their learning and to plan appropriate next steps was effective. Parental engagement with children's learning is now greater as a result of our remote learning. The school and nursery implemented a range of effective strategies with a focus on nurture, social, emotional and mental well-being, and that continues throughout our recovery. The progress with recommendations from the previous inspection, the two areas that had been identified by the inspectors at week, has been very good. They identified relentless focus and drive to improve outcomes for children, and this has remained strong across North Newton Primary School and Nursery. Senior leaders empower others, encouraging shared leadership very well. The This Is It guidance developed collegiately by staff provides advice and clear expectations of practice. This has supported improved consistency of learning and teaching across the school. Senior leaders meet regularly with staff to talk about progress as part of our robust monitoring and tracking processes now in place. And this gives a clear overview of progress against the school, as well as in key aspects of learning and development. Our staff have implemented planned interventions and strategies promptly with clear measures in place to assess the impact on children's progress. And the data provided by the school has shown that despite disruption caused by COVID-19, that attainment and literacy and numeracy is continuing to improve across the school over the past two years. The final aspect of the report was that it was commendable that staff have addressed the original recommendations from the inspection successfully. As a senior leader, the biggest achievement has been the sense of team displayed by the staff, children and families, ensuring that North Mewton Primary School and Nursery are really positive places of learning. Thank you all for your support. Thank you very much, Annabelle and Gillian. Um, can I ask elected members if you have any questions? Councillor Simpson. Thanks very much indeed, convener. I have a, a question relating to the, the second last paragraph on page one of the letter. What a good letter it is. Um, they, they make mention there of um, children with access to well prepared learning activities and that they make it not, not only digital, but also paper learning packs. And I, I, you'll be amazed to hear I'm firmly of the view that the internet may never catch on, uh, certainly for everyone. Uh, and there are grandparents and others who collect perhaps a range of kids from school for whom the digital way is, 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 is never going to work. Um, they, they may not have a computer and they may not be able to, to, to work it. Um, so I just wondered if um, this having this paper alternative uh, is is used across the, the estate or is it just is it just you at North Muirton? Um, I think that that probably has been across where all schools have been very responsive to what children and families need and that's exactly what we we implemented a response um, if schools reached out to their families and the communities and that's what we did at North Muirton Primary School to make sure that we were giving them what they required. Sharon, you wanted to answer about the wider? Yes, thank you, Kim uh, that, that would be really good. And, and Annabelle has alluded to the fact that she thinks it probably has been across the board. Um, but, but also, North Muirton were, were not just using a, a range of different ways to engage children. They'd used some really creative and innovative ways to make sure that all learning was not on a screen. And I think we all recognise the how tiresome it can be sitting at a screen all the time, particularly for children. And so North Muirton had all sorts of different um, activities that some which were paper based, but they engaged with the local shops and communities to be in, in providing <coughs> materials for learning. They had challenges that took them right the way across the community that were about more active learning approaches. Um, they used phone boxes and, and things to do to do swaps and that kind of creativity was recognised by lots of our schools across the board where they looked at lots of different ways in which children could learn 
And so there were things like active learning opportunities in the active school clubs and, and Lyle supported us with some of that. The early learning team talked about outdoor learning activities and some of the, the ways in which we were seeking um, help from parents to make sure that our children were not attached to screens the whole time. Um, but certainly North Muirton Primary School was a, an excellent example of all of that creativity. Thank you. Thanks very much, Convener. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Duff. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Convener. Uh, uh, thanks, Annabelle, for, for your report. I think it's an excellent uh, uh, letter and, and you know, reflects the, the, the effort and the commitment of yourself and your senior management team and your, your teachers in, in uh, responding to the issues uh, at, at North Muirton. Um, it, in the letter, it does talk about obviously the the kind of um, you know stress and anxiety in children coming back to school, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm just wondering, you know, have you seen you know improvements in in their um, well-being, if you like, with with you know to, in connection with stress and anxiety, and are the children kind of getting back to a more normal kind of place, if you know what I mean? Uh, given that you know they've been back at the school for a, a wee while now are you seeing improvements in in their general well-being in that area yes um our um our children um very much we've placed um, health and well-being at the heart of everything that we do and um, if we've got good relationships and children being really well supported at school they'll flourish in every other aspect of their learning so we've used our emotion works which was in place here within the school we've extended our outdoor learning and um, we've really thought about the day for our children so we have smart starts every morning and every afternoon so that's really supported children on their return our children have been incredibly resilient and where we have seen that children are struggling um, I'm really proud that we're very quick and very responsive to get alongside the child and the family to ensure that their well-being is at the heart of all that we do um, and I think as we have developed through our recovery um, curriculum that has really supported um, children's health and well-being because that's really at the centre and the heart of, of our approach at North Muirton Primary School. And, um, you know, as we, a recovery obviously has goes up and down, but um, I'm proud that we're being responsive and that children are responding positively as we as we move forward. Um, and they now are the leaders, if you like, in terms of sharing how they feel and their responses to COVID-19. They've become little experts too on it. So whilst we've um, created that health and wellbeing um, approach, keeping le our learning and teaching exactly what they need and then being part of that learning process is really developing um, mm. their resilience and wellbeing. And um, I think what was lovely after both lockdowns was the positive response of children bounding back into school because we'd keep, um, kept North Muirton primary school at the focus of our community of our community and so that that lovely ethos is continuing mm. through so that's really important to children's well-being we also have um, our community learning assistance and so they are supporting us if we with specific cases as well as active use of mind space so it's a really team approach to health and well-being but yes all of these interventions are giving us um, positive um, progress for all Great, thanks very much. That's really good to hear. Thanks, Gimena. Thanks. Can I ask, um, just following on from Councillor Duff's question about smart starts, what, what's that? It's not something I'm yeah. familiar with. We recognise that um, coming back to school, um, when, the way we'd set up our days, as, as Sharon's referred, there was just so many different ways that children could engage with us that evidently coming back to school was going to be hard in the sense that many of us did our learning in our pyjamas, which was good and responsive. So we knew that that getting up and that coming into school potentially could be tricky for some. So what we what we did was we developed um, smart starts. This was around our response to engagement for the return um, for our inspection as well as dovetailing what our children needed for um, returning from a period of lockdown. So Smart Start is a very settled way to come into um, your classroom. There is a variety of activities that will meet all different types of learners needs. So there might be construction, there might be sensory, there might be over learning of aspects of literacy and numeracy. There'll be emotional um, well-being check-ins and in some classrooms um, there is 
a, a cup of tea and a piece of toast as is required so that we have been really thinking smartly about what our children need to get them smoothly into school and get them back into the way of learning. This proved really successful and with pupil voice on the table we have continued that because um, high learning and achievement and engagement is really high on our agenda. Thank you for that. Good to hear. Um, I'm not seeing any further questions. Are there any comments on the report? Councillor Rebeck. I think it's again convenient and just briefly, I think again it's important to recognise that Annabelle coming into a, a new head teacher role of quite a large primary school had a, had a to-do list including um, substantial school improvement, global pandemics and a merger with a local prim neighbouring primary school. So it's been an impressive one and one that I think um, I think most of the boxes are pretty much ticked off or certainly two of them are and the third one's ongoing. So I, again, just to, to formally recognise um, our best wishes for that and, and congratulations. Thanks, Kimina. And a new school build as well, on top of all that. <laughs> indeed, indeed. My, my my best memory, I think, of, of uh, the school build will be that little primary one boy that yelled, Mrs Burns, Mrs Burns, I've stayed clean. <laughs> because that seemed to be his biggest achievement that he'd managed to stay from lunchtime till early afternoon clean for the photos. So yes, that's obviously a smart start going well there. Um, on behalf of the committee, Annabelle, I would just like to, I, I think there's been a, a degree of modesty in the way that you've presented in terms of, of what has actually been achieved here. You know, you came into post in January 2020, bang into lockdown in March, you know, new school build, uh, the, the creation of a, of a new school community, um, and you've just, you know, excelled. We, we couldn't thank you anymore for, for what you've done um, and your team. I, I was listening to your comments and you talked about a uh, relentless focus and drive, empowering others, clear guidance and expectation and a sense of team. Well, good luck building all that into your vision values names because it'll have to be quite a lengthy one. Um, but that that clearly is what, what typifies uh, what the what what goes on at, at North Merton and, and with you and your team right at the very heart of it. And and we're really grateful because we know it makes a, a real difference to the lives of, of all the children in your care. Um, so thank you very much. Um, we're delighted that this has been the final report of uh, this session for the exec subcommittee. We've had some really good reports through this year, but we couldn't have asked for a a better one to, to finish off with. So thank you very much and we hope thank you have you. A, a good Monday. Thank you. Thanks Gillian. So I think that brings us to the end of the agenda. Um, can I have a brief comment please convener? You can, Councillor Ribbick. Thank you, it's just very briefly and um, and again without patronising anybody but yourself and Councillor Duff and my experience over these five years have made these executive subcommittees a very pleasurable experience and whatever our political differences are I would just like to say thank you for that and um, I have thoroughly enjoyed these executive subcommittees and a, a large part of that's down to officers but it is also down to you and Councillor Duff as well and it's appreciated. Thanks. Thank you very much Councillor Rebecca. I, I had a, a few notes here and it was about thanking uh, colleagues that have sat on this exec sub. There's been quite a, a bit of turnaround in, in some of the members but what has been consistent has been the, the quality of, uh, of questioning, of reading through some quite lengthy reports um, but just that overarching ambition that we're all we're all pulling the same way and um, because school improvement um, and making sure that we give all the children and young people the best possible start um, has been at the core of what all of us believe in um, and our officers certainly make it a lot easier because we can ask for a better quality of a uh, team in ECS so it is greatly appreciated. I, I also wanted to pay tribute to James who I think might have left but I don't see him on my on my screen because the the quality I always remember Barbara Vaughan talking about the the quality of of data and the way that is presented to make it meaningful and I think over the past five years we've seen changes in the way that the data is presented to committee and it is really easy to to read to to understand and and to compare to to previous years so I think James and his colleagues should uh, be have credit paid to them 
uh, for that. So if you can pass that on, Sharon, if he's if he's left the call. Um, I'd also like to thank Linda and to thank Charlotte, who has just announced earlier on that she's retiring early because she's far too young um, after 42 years service in local government. And I think people like Charlotte are often the unseen people that keep the wheels of these uh, committees uh, rolling along. So um, I don't really have an awful lot more to say than that, but it has. I think that, you know, Perth Grammar School in North Muirton today really um, just uh, brought things to a really good a good end for this session. Um, thank you all very much um, indeed, and um, we will see what the future brings for those of us that are planning to come back. Uh, and Councillor Simpson, we wish you all the very best, and uh, I think it sounds like your grandson's going to keep you busy with that all-you-can-eat buffet. Um, and I dare say there'll be lots of going out on his bike as well. So thank you very much for your for your questioning um, of officers and your support for, for all the schools, particularly those in the in the Strathmore ward that I know you've taken a very personal interest in over, over the years that you've been a councillor. So with that, unless anybody else has anything to say, um, I think we'll draw the meeting to a close and, and thank you very much. And uh, some of us hope to, to see you again on these uh, committee, perhaps in person in the future. So thank you very much. <laughs>